Hello everyone, my name is Mr Mansell. I'm Head Teacher Mathematics. Welcome to the Year 11 Assessment Information Presentation. Today I will outline what this presentation is about. I will look at the Assessment Handbook, Pattern of Study Requirements and the ATAR, UAC Information, Assessment Schedules, Cessation of Courses, Assessment Requirements, and assessment task appeals. The assessment handbook contains many items which students need to make themselves familiar with. It has what is an assessment, assessment schedule booklet and time frame, HSC and post-secondary study requirements, performance bands awarded in the HSC, the Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank, which is the ATAR, Students Accelerated on a Course, Disability Provisions, what the student's responsibilities are, Task Appeal Forms, the school's responsibilities, Academic Warning Letters, Students Failing to Achieve a Satisfactory Progress in a Course, and Vocational Education and Training. The New South Wales Education Standards Authority, which is also known as NESA, has HSC and post-secondary study requirements for students to study a minimum of 12 units of Year 11 courses and a minimum of 10 units of Year 12 courses. Both Year 11 and Year 12 course patterns must include at least six units of a board developed course or at least two units of the board developed course in English or English studies, three courses of two or more units either board developed or board endorsed courses and at least four other subjects. In this slide I will talk about the performance bands awarded in the HSC. There are six performance bands Band 6 being the highest, which gives students an indication on the performance in a course in relation to the syllabus outcome and relative to other students in New South Wales who have completed the course. For two unit courses, the maximum possible mark is 100 and a band 6 which corresponds to marks from 90 to 100. Band 5 corresponds to marks from 80 to 89 and so forth. While extension courses are of one unit value and have a maximum possible mark of 50, with the exception of extension to mathematics, there are four bands which are used to report extension courses. A band E4 corresponds to marks from 45 to 50. A band E3 corresponds to marks from 35 to 44 and so forth. The ATAR. Chances are you've given it some thought, wondered what it is exactly and how it's calculated. The ATAR, or Australian Tertiary Admission Rank, is a number between 0 and 99.95. The key thing to know is that it's a rank, and not a mark out of 100. It tells you about how you've gone in the HSC overall compared to other students, no matter what combination of courses you or they have studied. This is different to your HSC marks, which tell you how you've performed in individual courses. The median ATAR is usually around 70. What is the ATAR used for? The ATAR has only one purpose, to help universities select students for their courses. And that's it. Most unis also use other selection criteria too. For example, if you want to study a design course, you'll probably need to submit a portfolio. Who is eligible for an ATAR? To get an ATAR, you must complete at least 10 units of ATAR courses. A full list of these courses is available on the UAC website. And how is it calculated? Well, put simply, your ATAR is based on a combination of your scaled marks in your best 10 units. So, if you study more than 10 ATAR units for your HSC, your ATAR will be calculated using your best two units of English, and your best eight remaining units. Which courses should you choose for your HSC? You can answer this by asking yourself another question. 
which courses are my strongest and which do I enjoy the most. Remember too that there is more than one way to get into uni. So go to the UAC website at uac.edu.au and find out how to access your potential. The Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank, which is also known as the ATAR, is a rank calculated by the universities of which the top rank is an ATAR of 99.95. It's based on the performance in the HSC examination, which is the scaled aggregate of the best units of NESA determined courses, which includes at least 10 units of NESA developed courses, including at least two units of English and at least three courses of two units or greater and at least four subjects and no more than one VET examination will be calculated in your ATA. An important note to remember is the ATAR is about position, where a student is ranked across the entire cohort of students who are eligible for an ATAR in Australia. The University Admissions Centre, also known as UAC. This is where applications for university are made. In the event there is disadvantaged experienced in Year 11 and or Year 12, then students can apply for Educational Access Schemes, also known as the EAS. Applications could be also made for equity scholarships and there's finally a school recommendation scheme known as the SRS. The types of disadvantage include disrupted schooling, financial hardship, severe family disruption, excessive family responsibilities, English language difficulty, personal illness or disability, refugee status or a difficult school environment. The entry to university is applying directly to your universities of interest where they will look at the holistic assessment of the student not just the ATAR. They will consider the Year 11 results as very important. Some universities with early entry schemes are the University of Wollongong with applications open in July. Western Sydney University, which has the HSC True Rewards program based on HSC BAN results. The University of Technology UTS in search based on HSC subject averages. The ATAR is required for the University of New South Wales and Sydney University, which are linked to any approved educational access scheme. Some useful websites that you can access are the University Admissions Centre to find a course, or you can apply through UAC for that course. You can also fill out the application for the Educational Access Scheme, the Equity Scholarships and the School Recommendation Schemes on this site. Nesta Students Online is another useful website which provides study tips and past papers. They also provide students personalised HSC timetable and access to the HSC rules and processes. Another useful website is JobJump. This is a holistic website for career planning and to access this website, you can use the school password in this video. In your assessment handbook, there are assessment schedules for all subjects. There are three tasks for year 11. At the top of the assessment schedule, it describes the nature of the task the timing as to the indicative date and time, the components of the assessment and the total weightings of each task. If we drill down into the first task of this sample assessment schedule, you will see the nature of the task. One which is a research report followed by the timing, which is an indicative time in this example, when it will take place, which is term one of week nine, the assessment schedule also has the outcomes being assessed. In this task, 
The components allow students to understand that they are being assessed on knowledge and understanding which is made up of 15% and another component which also the skills required to answer those which is another 15% component totaling 30% for this task. This is the Year 11 Assessment Schedule Summary from Term 1 to Term 3. Remembering that Year 11 is made up of three terms. It summarises all the assessment tasks that the student will have and their indicative time as when they will take place. This can be useful to allow students to plan for their assessments as many of them may be grouped together. If you are wanting to cease a course, then the course change or cessation form needs to be applied for. It needs to be completed in order and you'll be counselled regarding the change of pattern of study. You will need to provide evidence or good reason for that change. There is an approval process that Mr Malios, our Deputy Principal, will conduct and also the study requirements once that course has been ceased. The number of requirements placed on students by NESA are a greater than 80% attendance per course, attendance to school two days before a task, students must submit work by the due date, any outstanding academic warning letters must be resolved, all work submitted must be their students' own work, attempt all assessments tasks and prepare for examinations and make a serious attempt of all tasks. It is expected that work submitted in fulfilment of assessment requirements shall be the student's own work. Examples of malpractice would include plagiarism, excessive use of another's sources and not being acknowledged, copying or using work of another person and submitting it as your own, falsifying receipt of documents, misbehaving during the examination period or any assessment periods, not completing your own work, having someone else complete the task, offering false documentation in support of an appeal, cheating during a test or an exam. This will obviously result in the student being awarded a zero mark for this task. When appealing an assessment mark, this must be done during the class period you receive the assessment task from the teacher. Students must clearly indicate the reasons for the appeal to the teacher verbally. On the same day that the student receives the task, the student needs to submit the appeal form to the faculty head teacher for consideration. In the assessment handbook, there is an assessment task appeal form. This appeal form can be filled out by the students for absence two days before a task, late or missed a class two days before a task, apply for an extension, absence from a task. You can also apply for special consideration or appealing a zero assessment mark that has been awarded. To be considered for illness and or misadventure, the application needs to be accompanied with a medical certificate completed by the medical practitioner outlining how the illness and or misadventure has affected the student's ability to complete a task. The evidence needed to be provided are the assessment task appeal form, a medical certificate from the practitioner and the illness and or misadventure information form completed by the practitioner. The last page of the assessment handbook contains receipt of the assessment policy and procedures. If students and parents can both sign it and return it to your year advisor, it will be greatly appreciated. Thank you for paying attention to this presentation.